you know what's interesting, you guys? The pre-Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis era games that a lot of them were arcade ports. I only talk about Altered Beast in the past, but in today's video, I want to focus on a game that might have been the biggest killer app of that era, and that is none other than... Strider for the Sega Genesis, developed by Capcom as a partnership with the manga studio Moto Kikaku. You, you don't recognize this guy? Come on, guys! It's Strider! Okay, fine. It's not the first time that Capcom messed up with her cover art, but you at least remember this guy, right? Yeah, he's perhaps most famous for his appearances in Marvel vs. Capcom, but this guy over here had a lot of different games. But I want to focus on this version in particular because it's perhaps the most well-known. So, how did Strider hold up? Well, let's stride onward and find out! Really? You, you really want me to do this again? Really? Fine, just because I read your comments. Okay, here we go. The game takes place in the dystopian future of 2048. The reincarnated Hiryu, youngest member of the ninja-like Striders, is tasked with stopping the evil dictator Grandmaster any way he can. Thank you very much, Sony, for helping me writing the plot synopsis. The most notable thing about Hiryu is the Cypher, his trusty saber. It emits a relatively long plasma wave that can decimate any enemy. Its usefulness comes into play when you want to attack an enemy, but want to stay out of its attacking range. Not enough? How about collecting a power-up that makes the range of the Cypher twice as long? It has limited use, but this can make even the most intimidating foes into minced meat. Besides using his awesome sword, Strider has another ability under his sleeve. His capability of scaling walls and ceilings. And it's remarkable for its time and you will definitely need to use it in order to traverse some of the trickier environments in the game. So with all that said and done, it looks like our hero is well prepared for battle, but unfortunately that's where the problems start creeping in. First is the fact it can only jump straight up or in a specific angle. Nothing in between. Not to mention, you cannot control the direction of your jump while you're in mid-air. And while it might be realistic, the game lost realism points the moment I saw an entire Senate turn into a Japanese communist dragon. But the point I'm trying to make is that in a platform game, you want to make specific jumps so you won't fall to your doom. And while it doesn't mean you're gonna die all the time, it does become one major annoyance. And don't get me started on that undergrab section at stage 5. It's very hard to judge where you're supposed to jump to since the screen is cropped a little compared to the arcade version, and of course everything is inverted, so everything that's up is down and vice versa. It makes the level incredibly fair. And by fair, I mean not fair. But probably a worse issue is how unforgiving Strider can be. This is a game where you have to keep slashing constantly, or you find yourself dead instantly. This gives me a great opportunity to introduce a new segment to my videos called... Gee, thanks. Those moments in gaming in which you, the player, die because of a reason that's beyond your control. And there are plenty of gee, thanks moments in Strider. Like these. Gee, thanks. G, thanks! G, thanks! But if we really want to talk annoying, let's talk about those bots that are the most annoying enemy in a video game since the Medusa heads in Castlevania. Except unlike those, the bots take more than a few hits to be taken down, and they come at the least opportune moments possible! Though it was pretty strange that after dying by those bots about five times, they disappeared from the segment altogether, which is weird. I'm not sure if it's a glitch, but it does also happen with power-ups as well. Does that make Strider a bad game? No. It just had that retro frustrating feeling to it. But despite that, all the levels are great and feature some memorable set pieces. One moment you could be walking on the ceiling, and on the other moment you could be... walking a dinosaur. Another thing I love about this game is the level complete screen. 
right before the level is done, the game will actually capture the very last frame that Strider does before that screen shows up. And you can capture Strider in the most goofy situations, and it always makes me laugh. I also want to mention that the bosses in this game are very unique. But there is one I have to talk about. The Gravity Orb. The only way to attack it is by being caught by its gravitational pull and spam the attack button. However, it does require to get hit at least once in order to dispatch it. And sometimes you'll get hit more than once because you haven't attacked the boss enough. And in a game that every bit of health is important, well... If you only have one hit left and you have to face this boss, kiss one of your lives goodbye. When it comes to the graphics of Strider, it still amazes me to this very day that this game looks so close to the arcade. I really have to give credit to Capcom for making all the sprites really nicely detailed from Strider himself to his uniquely designed enemies. Not to mention how beautiful the levels themselves are. I do wish the framework was a bit tighter, especially during the Amazon stage when those annoying pterodactyls show up. They must die! Die, pterodactyls! Die! 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 Dude, what's the big deal? And not to mention, the boss at the end of that stage has the most fearsome attack in the whole game, making everything move 5 frames per second. As for the game's sound department, while I'm not a big fan of the soundtrack itself, I will admit that it is fitting, though it is of low quality. There are some tracks that I like though, like the very first level, but the rest of the game falls short not only in quality, but also in the melodies of the tracks themselves, though I will cut it some slack for being an early Genesis game. However, the anti-grab section in stage 3 has one of the most annoying sounds I heard on the Genesis! <laughs> Why, for the love of God, why would you put that in? Before I regret having ears again, let's just go on to the final cut. On a positive side, this game looks beautiful. Especially for its time, everything looks terrific. All the levels are memorable and have great epic set pieces. And the freaking sword is awesome! On the negative side, the jumping controls are subpar at best. There is a slew of technical difficulties like glitches and frame rate issues. Can say I'm a big fan of the soundtrack. And lastly, the game can be extremely frustrating, especially when there is a boss where you have to get hit in order to defeat it. And that's stupid. Overall, there's a lot of good things to say about Strider, but unfortunately it's one of the most frustrating games I've ever played in my life, let alone the Sega Genesis. Yes, it's better than games like Altered Beast, but... The lives and continues are incredibly limited, so if you lose everything you have to go all the way back to the beginning and experience the same frustrating elements over and over again. If you really want to experience Strider, I would highly recommend get Strider 2 for the PS1 and play the arcade port of this game. As for the Genesis version, you can go a whole lot worse than this, but I would recommend to proceed with caution. Can someone turn that sound off? Thanks for watching the video, guys. First and foremost, I want to give two shoutouts. One for Peridactyl since he showed up in this video, so I recommend check his stuff out, he's a really funny guy. And the other is My Life in Gaming, since they helped me a lot with taking footage of old console games, so I recommend checking their Strider video. I decided to not use scores anymore, but I am conflicted of how to continue the show from now on. I think of maybe scrapping the whole Final Cut segment altogether, but it really depends on what you guys think, since I really appreciate your input. I'm gonna try to format the show a little bit after this video, so I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, take care.